Hello. It has been two years since we had classroom discussions. As COVID-19 cases continue to decline, we need to gradually bring the students back to the campus with safety and health protocols in place. As such, let us delve into the specifics of the implementation of limited face-to-face -face and flexible learning classes. For first semester school year 2022 to 2023, the programs are categorized into three learning models. Category 1 is a combination of face-to-face -face and asynchronous classes. In this learning model, students are divided into two groups who attend the face-to-face -face sessions alternately. For example, Group 1 are taking up the face-to-face -face lecture and laboratory experiments while the other group are given video resources or readings and asynchronous activities. The groups will switch the following week. Programs under this category are the following. Category 2 is a combination of synchronous and asynchronous classes. This is the learning model we have been implementing for the past two years. Example class activities are recorded video lectures, online consultations, home-based activities, and online exams. Programs under this category are the following. Category 3 is a combination of synchronous and asynchronous classes and limited face-to-face -face assessments. Lectures are done online while assessments are held in the campus. Assessments need to be planned out well. And requests need to be made to the endorsing and approving authorities. Programs under this category are the following. The activities of the classes in categories 1, 2, and 3 shall be disclosed in the course guides. Course Guide All faculty members shall provide their class with the approved course guide at the start of the classes. There are three templates for the course guide. The columns of the course guide shall be filled out accordingly. In column 1, list the relevant dates. In column 2, List the primary topics and subtopics that will be discussed over the week. Since modified semester will be implemented, a nine-week modular approach specifying the essential topics of the course, including major exams, at the discretion of the instructor or professor must be determined. In column 3, list the required learning resources for the selected topic. This may include your recorded lecture or video resource, a chapter from a textbook, or a journal article. The title and author of the material must be included. All learning activities, including formative assessments, such as quizzes, student presentations, and graded recitation are listed in columns 4, 5, and 6. For category 1, under columns 4 and 5, indicate the specific date and time for the student's asynchronous and face-to-face -face activities, respectively. For category 2, under columns 4 and 5, indicate the specific date and time for the student's asynchronous synchronous activities, respectively. For Category 3, under columns 4, 5, and 6, indicate the specific date and time for the student's asynchronous, synchronous, and face-to-face -face activities, respectively. Exams and other summative exams shall be indicated in its own row topic and manner of deployment, either asynchronous, synchronous, or face-to-face. QR code. The Crisis Management Committee or CMC will provide students with a QR code for each category or group, which will be scanned upon entering and exiting the campus. Only students with QR code will be allowed to enter the campus premises. QR codes are color-coded to make them easier to identify. Green for Category 1. Blue for Category 2. And yellow for Category 3. Students are not allowed to leave the campus between classes. Each student are only permitted to one entry and one exit per day or cycle. Let us now discuss how classes will be conducted in each category. Category 1. 
Category 1 classes will proceed with the limited face-to-face -face classes following the recommended groupings and protocols. The weekly cyclical student shifting model will be implemented during the conduct of the limited face-to-face -face classes. The students will be grouped accordingly. Prior to the commencement of classes, the registrar's office will provide the official student groupings to be posted by the colleges and departments in their respective social media groups or pages. Class advisors will oversee the students' compliance to their groupings. Since all subjects of Category 1 classes are to be held in campus, students during their schedules are only to remain in their designated homeroom. To restrict student mobility, the instructor will be moving from one room to another for their in-person classes. Students are also advised to consult with their instructors during their class period, instead of entering the faculty rooms or offices to minimize contact and mobility. All consultation beyond the class period can be done virtually. Faculty members teaching Category 1 classes, who have the necessary ICT equipment, can proceed with hybrid or high-flex learning for their classes, in which the instructor or professor delivers lectures for both students in the classroom and students in the video conferencing platform. However, high-flex lectures shall be clearly specified in course guides, and the teacher has to be present in the classroom. The registrar's office will be sending SMS notifications to the parents of the students every after-class session of the last subject of the day. Category 2 Faculty members teaching Category 2 classes may proceed with the usual online synchronous and synchronous activities. PSAU Escuela shall remain to be the university's official learning management system, where all class learning materials will be uploaded. The Registrar's Office in collaboration with the LMS Committee, is responsible for ensuring that students are enrolled in the LMS. Category 2 classes may request limited face-to-face -face activities. But the initially approved course guide shall be revised before requesting CMC endorsement and VPAA approval. Prior to the start of classes, the Office of Admission and Registration will provide contact information for students to the colleges and departments. Category 3 Faculty members teaching Category 3 classes need to seek CMC endorsement and VPAA approval for the conduct of limited face-to-face -face activities as disclosed in the approved course guide, at least two weeks before the scheduled date of the activity. Once the request is approved, the students will be provided with the QR code for that specific date and activity by the CMC, to be presented by the students upon their entry to the campus. This QR code is not to be used for other activities and dates. Off-campus activities Off-campus activities for the completion of course requirements, such as National Service Training Program, Internship, Practicum, Training, and Fieldwork, shall only be allowed subject to the approval of the LGU and or partner institution. The coordinator or focal person of the activity shall obtain the endorsement from the CMC and approval from the Office of the President. Approval from concerned LGU and or partner institution shall also be sought, if necessary. The coordinator or focal person shall include in the request letter the detailed plan of the off-campus activities, in accordance with the applicable health protocols and the conditions outlined in IATF resolutions and its subsequent issuances. With complete documentary requirements including but not limited to Notarized parental consent Medical certificate Insurance Copy of Memorandum of Agreement, signed by both the college and PTE Detailed Internship Plan Training Agreement Vaccination Card In-campus co-curricular and extracurricular activities The procedure for off-campus activities also applies to in-campus co-curricular and extracurricular activities such as sports events, musical events, competitions, graduation rites, ceremonies, among others. A maximum of two-week-long activity shall only be requested. In case the activity is more than two weeks, another request shall be made. Seeking endorsement from Crisis Management Committee. Seeking endorsement from the CMC shall be done by the requester at least two weeks before the activity. This applies to the Category 2 and 3 classes, off-campus and in-campus co-curricular and extracurricular activities. 
there are three forms to be accomplished. Form A, intent to conduct limited face-to-face -face classes or activities and on-the-job training, OJT. Form B, endorsement of crisis management committee. Form C, post-activity report. The requester shall fill out forms A and B and ensure that all requirements are complete. The requirements are as follows. Letter of intent from the faculty member addressed to the office of the president. List of participating students with their email addresses. Notarized parental consent of the students. Proof of insurance with COVID-19 coverage of the students, optional. Proof of full vaccination of the students and faculty member. Approved course guide for category two and three. Plan of work for co-curricular and extracurricular activity. The requester shall facilitate the signing of Form B which shall be signed by the members of CMC. Once the activity is completed, the requester shall submit Form C to the CMC. The subsequent measures are also to be implemented as to bolster our safety and health protocols. Maximum capacity of the facilities. Only those authorized classrooms and facilities shall be used in the conduct of the limited face-to-face -face classes following the 1.5-meter physical distance and IATF permitted maximum capacity. The maximum capacity of the classroom shall only be 25 individuals and or 50% of the classroom size, whichever is lower. For laboratory facilities, the maximum capacity shall only be 30% to 50% of the class size. Foot and vehicle traffic. The safety and health marshals per college will monitor the ingress and egress of the students, faculty members and non-teaching personnel in the building as coordinated with the security unit. Gate 1 right lane will serve as the entry point of the students while Gate 2 is dedicated for the employees. When leaving the campus, Gate 1 left lane is designated as exit gate for the students while Gate 2 for the employees. The college also needs to identify the following. Entry and exit points of their respective buildings following one-way foot traffic and Parking space Personal hygiene kits Everyone is encouraged to bring their personal hygiene kits which may contain ethyl alcohol or hand sanitizer, cleansing wipe, tissue paper, toilet paper, hand towel, extra face mask, and hand soap. Stay home when not feeling well. Individuals who may possess COVID-19 symptoms shall stay at home and shall report their conditions to their professors or supervisors. The medical and surveillance teams will be monitoring their health status and a notice or certificate will be given upon re-entry to the university. Screening at entry points of the campus and building. Upon entry to gate and or the college building. The security unit and health and safety marshals and shall screen students, teaching and non-teaching personnel, and visitors, respectively, for the following. Wearing a face mask and or face shield as may be required by the IATF. Presentation of vaccination card or equivalent. Body temperature check. Individuals will not be allowed to enter the campus premises if they have a temperature of 37.5 degrees or higher, even after a 5-minute rest. This individual may temporarily be placed in the isolation room until he or she is transported to his or her home or health facility. The medical team will attend the individual manifesting COVID-19 symptoms based on DOH guidelines. Presenting valid student identification is also required upon entry. If a student does not have an ID yet, the certificate of registration, a previous semester's ID, or any other acceptable form of identification may be used as a substitute. Classrooms, laboratories, and other facilities. All colleges shall post visual cues on safety and health protocols in every classroom, laboratories, and other facilities as well as markings on the floors indicating directions. The students, teaching and non-teaching personnel shall follow the approved foot traffic preferably one-way foot traffic in the ingress and egress of the building, classrooms, laboratories, and other facilities. For two-door rooms, the door closest to the board shall be used as the entrance while the other door for exit. For one-door rooms, one-way traffic shall be strictly implemented. 
students are required to go straight to their assigned rooms upon entering the campus. The college or program shall also designate a communal space where the students will be directed, if they arrive early and their rooms are not yet available, to avoid them loitering. Faculty members shall create seat plans indicating the assigned seats of students. Students shall not be allowed to sit anywhere and shall use the assigned seat throughout the semester. The seat plan, depending on the room size, shall be forwarded by the college or department for approval of the CMC. Safety and Health Protocols video explainer shall be played at the beginning of each week's first class. All facilities as well as equipment used by the students shall be cleaned and disinfected at the end of each school day. Allotted time for handwashing and disinfection shall be considered during the conduct of in-person sessions. Cafeteria and Dining Area Students are not allowed to leave the campus between classes to buy food and drinks. The college or program shall assign a dining room, alfresco dining area or communal space where the students will be allowed to eat. Wherein clean as you go and physical distancing shall be properly observed. Students are advised to bring their own plates or lunch boxes and drinking bottles and shall be prohibited from sharing food or beverage to anyone. Casual or unnecessary conversations in the dining area is also discouraged. The personnel of the cafeteria shall wear PPE to ensure food safety. The cafeteria shall develop a mechanism in ordering and delivering of food including other modes of payment. The cafeteria may opt to provide online or any other flexible means of taking orders and designating pickup areas for orders to avoid crowding. Library services and other shared facilities. Students and employees entering the library premises and other shared facilities such as computer laboratories shall fill out a record book containing their names, time-ins, and time-outs. All individuals can only stay in the library and shared facilities for one hour depending on the maximum capacity allowed and can only visit at least once a day. All books, journals, library materials to be returned shall be placed in a dedicated drop box for disinfection. Commonly shared computer units shall be cleaned and disinfected before and after use. Accommodation and Lodging Students who reside outside Magdalene will be prioritized in the dormitories. Students may present their antigen test prior to billeting to the dormitories. The room capacity shall only be limited to 50%, but the capacity may change as needed. Students staying in the dormitories need to bring their own sleeping materials and other personal necessities, including food and water good for the duration of their stay. Students are also not allowed to loiter around the dormitory and around the campus during off-class hours. To share their food, gadgets, school materials, utensils, and toiletries. Visitors are also not allowed inside the dormitories. Any item brought by a visitor are to be dropped at the main gate at 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., with proper labels. The roving guard will then endorse the items to the dorm manager and will notify the visitor afterwards. The dorm manager will oversee health and safety protocols in the dormitory. Non-compliance to the safety and health protocols shall be immediately recorded by the dorm manager and shall be reported to the institutional safety, surveillance and security officers. Monitoring and Evaluation All health and safety marshals need to submit the Monitoring and Evaluation Report, Weekly COVID-19 Monitoring Report, to the Crisis Management Committee and Office of the President for forwarding to the Commission on Higher Education Regional Office. Led by Institutional Planning Office, random inspection will also be conducted to ensure compliance of the colleges and offices. Please keep in mind that the pandemic is still ongoing and that we should take precautions in our everyday routines. Health and safety remain our top priority. It is imperative that we work in close coordination with our students and exercise due diligence for each curricular or extracurricular activity, whether it takes place in person or online. The adoption of these measures is our dynamic response to the current developments in the implementation of flexible learning approaches which may be flexible, face-to-face, -face, blended, and others, and may be used in various contexts, environments, or circumstances. 
limited face-to-face -face and flexible learning classes can only be successful with the participation and cooperation of all students and employees. These guidelines must be strictly adhered to for the sake of everyone's safety. As members of the PSAU community let us reaffirm these guiding principles and persist in our efforts to ensure that the students and the future of our nation receive the highest quality education.